So I had a friend that was kind of a car picker and he called me and he goes, hey, I think I found a Shelby. Just got a call from a gentleman in Iowa that wanted to uh, have somebody verify a, and authenticate a, a Shelby he'd found in a barn. In the Shelby's three or four cars out there. back there, right here. Where? Oh, oh. Parked here since we don't know when. Tires looked original, so did the paint. What makes this barn find special is the buyer is going to use an appraiser to figure out a fair price to pay for the car. If it's a real Shelby, which I believe it I is, it from over here. we need to probably have somebody come yep. and appraise the car and value it. And I go, I'd be interested in the car for my personal collection. And I go, the fairest way to do the deal is, is have Jeff or somebody like Jeff come and appraise the car. And then I'm just going to pay her what we figure out the car's worth today. And here to appraise the car is Jeff Yergovich one of the most respected Shelby restorers okay. in the country. Now that we got the car up in the air. Jeff restores Shelby's and Mustangs at his business, r and Motorsports in Lee's Summit, Missouri. But I want to show you the garage at his home. An incredible place. Hey, here's a guy with a passion for Shelby's and Mustangs. 69 Mach 1 Super Cobra Jet Drag Pack 4-speed car. Are you kidding me? We've got an Ember Glow. 66 coupe and 66 Shelby Hertz car. That one's mine. It's a white and gold car. It's not black. <laughs> Jeff even has his own parts department at his house. This is crazy. You think he watches many reruns on TV? So who are you gonna call? Screwed shut. Do what? The the door is screwed shut, so they gotta get a screw gun in here and unscrew the door just to open the door. We couldn't wait that long to take a peek inside. Looks like some animal tracks here. You got a light? Yeah. It's been sitting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, aftermarket air conditioning unit, I couldn't figure out what to do with the gauges that hung under the dash. Which mount like this under the center of the dash. So they hung them on the column. That hurts shifter. Light me up there a little bit. Yep. The seats will clean up and say they look all original. The factory comfort weaves here. Um, it's on a rock road in the middle of nowhere in Iowa in a barn that looks like it's ready to fall over with about 10 or 12 other vehicles. If you're doing anything. I'm going to grab these keys, Jerry. I want to see what. One of those vehicles was this 1965 Falcon Sprint convertible. This 1971 Roadrunner, that's a car the Widow's husband was driving when they were married in 1976. He wasn't driving the Shelby that much and parked it in 1980. Is that a Mercury Montego? He's got all the, keys in the, the front of that Falcon's in here somewhere. Yes, sir. That's a fender. Uh, let's walk around and look at the front of that Mercury. Looks like the stripes are still intact on that 71 Roadrunner. And that is one friendly cat right there. And dang, I'm getting all dusty here. Here's the front end of that Mercury and uh, flip on the flashlight here. Yeah, I can see the W nose, but that's about it. Well, let's go back to safety here and get back to the Shelby. Could be an early 1990s Chrysler Imperial, maybe. What, were they opening the door? Yeah, we're trying to, it's a bunch of stuff locking it. From the outside? Yeah. That's Preston, Bob's son. He had already moved that old wooden ladder. And then the placement okay. of this old motor and with the transmission attached was more theft prevention. Took a tow strap and drag it out of the way. And in the process, plow up a section of premium Iowa farmland. That's good. Her husband yeah. bought the car in 1973 and stored it here about 1980. That's the money shot, right? <laughs> yes, sir, that is a money shot. Hard to beat a Shelby in a barn, especially a dusty 67 with those impressive red Mercury Cougar taillights. And then that money shot gets upstaged way far by this cat, this defiant cat that we started calling Shelby. Shelby kind of challenged us when we aired up that driver's side rear tire. Man, that polyglass held air. 
Amazing. I tell you that cat Shelby was starting to impress me, you know, following all our moves and like checking out when we aired up that right rear tire. Man, I don't think old cat's kind of freaking us out, you know, getting up there posing for pictures and kind of like, this is my Shelby, not yours. Okay, so brakes froze up, tires won't roll. Outside and in the light, we can finally see the car. But what the typical enthusiast sees and what a Shelby Restorer sees are two different things. That's why Bob called on Jeff. That was smart. I've written hundreds of articles on Shelby's, but I would never write a big check for a car like this on my own. Yergovich knows every nut and bolt on these cars. He's had them all in his hands. He's done paint and body work for 40 years. You will not see the car as he sees the car. See, enthusiasts get overly excited. Then once they write that check, there's a massive sobering effect. It's happened to me more than once. I wrote a check for six figures for three cars I knew very little about. I was just so excited. But boy, writing that check wised me up. All of a sudden, I came to Earth, spaceman. So get your expert advice before you write the check and use a restore on a barn find. And I will tell you right now, this car hides a huge surprise. And without Yurkovich there, probably none of us would have been any the wiser. <laughs> I mean, I really can't speak for Bob. But as we show you the car, maybe you can guess what it is. We'll trailer the car to the shop, spray wash it, and put it up on a lift. But while the car is out here in the light, Jeff can get started with his appraisal. Okay, Jeff, take it away. The uh, rear valance has been... Uh worked and painted on. It's got a little bit of damage showing at the taillight panel and behind the bumper. Best we can tell the bumper's got a re-chrome replacement tag on it which tells us the bumper's either been re-chromed or replaced. Um, it's got a pretty good scratch in the quarter here that's been touched up so there has been a little bit of paint work done to it there. Some rust showing here on the bottom of the quarter panel and a lot of that's just from sitting in the barn with the so close to the dirt. The wheels uh, that I'm looking at, these are vintage wheels. They're from the era, probably installed. If it's a hubcap car, it was probably installed by the dealer at the time. Lug nuts are right, center caps are correct. Uh, the tires are a vintage era, probably 70 to 72 from what I can tell. So it's had a set of tires on it. Wouldn't be unusual with the mileage. Uh, the rest of what I see on the, the quarter, the door, the stripes look to be all original paint. The fender still looks to be original paint with the original stripe on it. The emblems are typically plastic and this is a plastic emblem. Uh, it's, it doesn't appear that it's ever been off of the car. It's got some misfit with a fender which makes me feel like that there's some, been some paint work on the front end that I can see. This looks like it was spotted in on the fender. The rest of this fender's original. The nose piece had some work on it. It's pretty obvious that this has been painted, uh, at least on this side. One, there's overspray all over everything. It has straight head hardware bolts in a lot of the stuff that should have Phillips headed bolts. This headlight's been replaced. It's not typical of what would have come in the car. Uh, and same with the halogen headlights. The extra emblem that's in the middle of the grill is off a 68 Shelby. Uh, it's, a, it's a dash emblem. Um, this emblem that's missing we found in the key fob pad. These are not original. If you look very carefully, you can see where the original rivets are underneath. Uh, these were added on uh, pretty typical from the 60s when uh, people would break in under the hood and take the air cleaner and the carburetors. Every 67 GT500 came with a 428 police interceptor with dual four carburetors. The tag is with the Z stamped in it for the outboard headlights. Here's what inboard lights look like. This car had outboards. It's the original boot for the power brake booster valve is still there. That's a assembly line part. The brake booster's never been replaced. It still has the original aluminum tag on it, so I'm gonna assume it hasn't been out. The paper tag is still on the top of it. This is, uh, you know, the hood hinges are original. In my observation, these shocks would be original assembly line shocks still on the car. Uh, of course, we know that the air conditioner was added on. It's probably uh, 
over the Montgomery Ward, Sears, something of that nature. It doesn't appear that any of that is a Ford type item. The fact that the radiator is an original radiator, uh, this is the correct tag for it. That's the correct number for it. Even the radiator cap is still original Autolite radiator cap. This car hadn't received the later on recall that they did where uh, the PCV system uh, uh, up to the air cleaner was later uh, upgraded at the dealers to where it went actually down into the intake manifold. Bob, can you talk just a little bit more about transparency with the price and paying Jeff's appraisal? Sure. So, I mean, it, we talked a little bit more at my office, but I thought the fair price for the widow would be to uh, have Jeff give a full appraisal on the car as it is, and then that's the selling price of the car. That's what I'm going to pay the widow. Those details Jeff spoke of may sound trivial, but with a collector car, see, that's what you're paying for. And if you don't have those parts, you got to go out and get them. What do you think a fan shroud costs for this car? <laughs> it, it almost looked like it had clear on it, but it doesn't. It's, it's a horse. It's horse hair. That's crazy. Yeah. That's probably every bit of two grand or more for the fan shroud. It's not broke. It's not cracked that I've seen anywhere. What if this car didn't have its original trunk mat? How much would that be? I, I want to make a really big point okay. to you, okay? Right now, I'll hand you four grand cash for this trunk mat. <laughs> if I saw this dusty old GT500 flying down the highway like this, you know what I'd say? Hey, 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 you, you pull, pull over. over. Man, uh, they, ain't, they ain't pulling over. Wait, wait till they get to a service station. Uh, oh, wait, those, those are gone. I saved some of the 40-year-old dust. Pretty original, huh? Very, very Before we wash the car. There's the Iowa inspection sticker from 1974 in the windshield. I don't know if it's an $80,000 car or a $60,000 car. There's the Iowa State. Or $150,000 car. <laughs> Having Jeff drag it out with me so he can see everything and then, uh, you know, we can wash it together, document the whole thing. I think it adds some credibility to the car and we'll see what the appraisal comes back. I'm kind of got butterflies in my stomach trying to figure out what it's going to be worth because I got to, I have to pay somebody some money for that car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some real money. And then we have to figure out what we're going to do to the car. So, you know, I'd really like to keep it as a survivor. I think that they're only original one time, but I am also the type of car person that wants to drive the car. So, you know, I think it needs a, a mechanical restoration. So what's the first thing we wanted to know? Does this car still have its original engine? The oil pan's not stock. The oil pan's been off. Somebody's put a deeper oil pan on for some reason, who knows? Not a good sign the engine's gonna be original. You can, you can see where it's all welded up and it's got a piece of angle iron welded on the bottom of it. Ford didn't stamp serial numbers into the 428 blocks on these cars, so what's Jeff looking for? He found something because he's calling Bob over. Not the original engine? Yeah, I'll show you something. Yeah. 427. Cool. See the screw in freeze plugs? So it's not a 428, it's 427. See the big head right there? That's a screw in freeze plug takes a little more than a common size Allen wrench to get them in and out. The two center main caps have got cross bolts. That's the bolts going into the main journals of the cross bolt block. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's definitely a 427 block. When it got installed, who knows? Well, the Shelby registry has an owner history of this specific GT500. He brought from Kansas City at old dark 30 that morning. Jay. Oh, so that's right. Owner installed. Oh. Not dealer installed. Okay. So it was documented that way. Yeah. So the owner knew all about it. He just wasn't alive to tell us. See, the top end could still be the original 428, which is exactly what Jeff figured he'd find. I mean, 428 heads fit on a 427, and, 
And why would anybody change those dual quads in that Cobra oval air cleaner? But, oops, that air cleaner assembly is a reproduction. Notice how the underside is smooth. Originals have this ribbing as seen here. And then this Shelby part number. The intake and dual four Holley carburetors were also original to the 428. Same for that dual point distributor. Got an Autolite condenser in it, so it's all correct. Got the right distributor. We'll knock off $2,000 to get one of these originals. Jeff pulled a valve cover to check one of the heads. It's a C7 uh, AE, so we know it's CAS 67. We found a date code, which is right here. 7D, what is that, 2? 1, 2. 1, 2. April of 19, April 12th of 1967 is when these heads were made. So no, that'd, that'd go in line with the production date of the car. Yes. So they're the correct heads for the 428 that came in the car. Correct. They probably just changed the short block. The engine was swapped, but the transmission could still be the original transmission. Funny thing, Ford did stamp the serial number on the transmission. And right there in that little pad that Jeff cleaned off were those numbers. So we had a match. Everything uh, appears to be original in the tranny, except the shifter's been replaced with a Hearst shifter. This should be an RUG. RUG S1. It's got the correct big block transmission in it. The original boot for the original shifter is still up in the floor. The drive shaft looks original, and the reason I can tell you that is because of the square weights that are on there. That's typically how it was done back in the day. There's some letters there. And it's going to say SPEC, if I'm not mistaken. That's what they call a spec rear end. Yep. And that is the correct rear end for the car. This tag will be actually uh, galvanized, so you want to clean it carefully to try to keep the galvanization on the tag. So, rear end's correct. The rear end has been out of it. And the reason I know is because the gasket's hanging out over. The factory gaskets didn't hang out over. The exhaust tips are original. The, uh, this pipe here, notice it's not rusty, and neither is this side, and that's because they're aluminized. You notice how the exhaust is completely rotted off, but the resonator pipes are perfect. That's because they're aluminized. They were aluminized from the factory. It has the three humps, what we call the three humps, the one, two, three hump. That's so uh, this has the had the original exhaust before it rotted off of it. That's what's left of a buffler. The exhaust manifolds are gone and somebody's replaced them with headers on it. What's left of them? Sucks people don't know how to use it. There's some a lot of surface rust that's down here from it sitting on the floor. Um, you know, nothing's really been uh, touched or worked over. Um, this car appears to have been probably undercoated at the dealer. It's got a lot of undercoat here, mm -hmm. which actually probably helped the car and protect it. You can see the original yeah. red oxide primer underneath the undercoat that's falling off here. Wow. So that, that, that helped preserve the bottom of the car, especially where it was sitting. This is pretty typical where the water comes back and it rots in these corners in here and, and a little bit of the wheel, outer wheelhouse and a little bit of the quarters rotten. This is an old school style traction bar that somebody has uh, made and put on there. These should not be here. Uh, one of the Shelby unique items is what they call the, the uh, spring re recoil bumpers. It stops the spring from going all the way up. Uh, all this appears to be original paint. These are galvanized rocker panels. They're showing a little corrosion from, you know, sitting on the floor for so many years. This is original paint, original stripe, original stripe, original paint, original stripe. But right here, from this area to the stripe, has been repaired and painted. All of the steering is original except this bracket right here, and that's a bracket that used to lower the steering dampener for headers. And that's why the brackets there. Well, here probably indicates where you had some damage in here at one point. If you look at the splash shield, how it's all bent up. Here you can see where the nose piece was repaired on this side. It's got a fiberglass patch on it right there. It's starting to come off. See, this fender's original. Undercoat all match. It's got the clutch fan, which is original. It's got the right part number on the fan blade. That's right. So whoever did an engine swap on this thing put everything back on it.
So, what's the appraisal? What's Bob going to pay for this, Shelby? So, I'm just, I'm just talking. So, if I'm going to drive the car and have fun with it, would you put 427 heads on it? Maybe aftermarket exhaust and give it a little more horsepower? Or would you put it back to 428? I'd put it back to 428. Okay. You answered my question. I think you got the right heads. I'd go get a PI block and try to get it date cut as close as you can because they're not serial numbered, so that's not going to have an effect on it. At least you can say it's period correct. You know what we do? Go back to the Shelby registry and tell them we put the right motor in it? Yeah. It's the coolest car I've ever found. Period. Yep. I want it in my personal collection. I've always liked these cars. And so if I got to spend 40, 60, 70 grand on it to make a fun driver that's a survivor car, that's what I think I want to do with I, it. I think, you know, with the condition and now we know the motor and stuff, I think the retail on this car is 70. That's what I think. The as it sits. As it sits. Mm -hmm. That's the retail. One. Wholesale. Wholesale, you'd want to... 60. 60. If you're wholesale at 60, retail at 70, I think I might just tell her, hey, I'll give you 65 for it. We've all had the, the bets today of what this was going to come out at. Your number and my number was exactly the same. You gotta see what you got. You could have. You know, I'm gonna sit in it. It's gonna be my new car, I think. And it fits like I was made for it. All right, make your vroom vroom noise. Vroom vroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> Man, we're in the middle of Iowa. And my goal would try to make this a sur survivor drivable car. And look at the logo on the stock gas cap. See in their E6015 Polyglass GTs. I'm not a big car guy that sits and just polishes the car and never drives it. It's a cool car, once in a lifetime deal for sure. Overall, it looks to be very original. It's had some typical 60s modifications done to it, but overall it seems to be a really original car with a few odds and ends done to it. I kind of had the feeling we were taking the Shelby away from Shelby.